and oh we're live we're oh live. my god welcome hey. to chat water the talk show where we chat all things black water oh and, what a smooth uh, crisp intro sounds i think i'm figuring it out i was gonna say um, you had to redeem yourself from saturday night <laughs> what happens to, oh welcome to black water the game where the game we play, where we play yeah D but black you, did water. Great. you did so good you did so good <laughs> i'm an inconsistent performer on my best days um, um <laughs> And speaking of Blackwater, wow, was last week a doozy. And by last yeah. week, I mean Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Right? Those Dish me, Sean, wow. I watched you go through just so many emotions in that session. It's all over the place. Fucking hell. Please dish me. If dish me. making the world better was as easy as just hurting people who did wrong, that fucking camp would be not exist anymore I but I, it's like you can't dismantle an oppressive system by punching one dude no. like fuck like God. i wanted to shoot that gnome so bad i wanted to he, shoot him but he wasn't the problem he's the not system, the problem the i mean he's not great problem. no look he'll get his <laughs> and he was wise not to mention his family but like <laughs> Just a little threat. I would never, I love, never have done anything to his family at all. I love the the turn for letters, like like the oh, moment God. he realized that like what was happening. There was that like shift of like you put your fucking hands on the table. There was like such a like palpable. Oh my god! I thought it was gonna kick off much larger than it did. Yeah. In that moment. Trust me, I wanted it to. I just I. It, I was just like, I wanted so desperately to do that coconut cast silence. And then, um, and then uh, we'll see what we could do. But, but that's I, not how we affect systemic change. No. I'm excited Which to is see. apparently what D&D is about now. Yeah, now our D&D is about <laughs> systemic change. We get to be I'm, heroes and uh, dismantle corrupt and awful world systems. That's I'm how excited to works. see what Letters does when he, like, obviously he knows, or maybe he doesn't know yet, that... Callie did pay him. Yep. Um, but I'm excited to see that conversation later on because I feel like that is a conversation that might happen where he's like, I mean, he's not, he's not okay with the fact that it was paid. Like he's like he 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 made that very clear, and like I don't think he blames Callie, but there's like there's a certain amount of him that I feel like is like super pissed off about the fact that they had to work within that shitty system yeah. in order to get him, especially when they could have theoretically just like fucking took him you know what they i just mean just left we they could have just left his figure he wasn't going to tell us anything so at all but um yeah i i it was uh that was wild that like the dorkas were a great new sort of uh opponent for you guys and i'm sure we're gonna see more of them oh could we gosh. not buy tim any more books i'm so sorry i'm <laughs> so sorry i bought it for him because i was like oh tom of beasts too like you love this book i was like oh okay. yeah and i bought it for him and i read and like it. now we have to deal with what i imagine is a sentient and malevolent blizzard like yes <laughs> what an ending like, what I, just, I was like i was like watching and i was like oh well there's not a lot of time left uh i don't know how the cliff lich is gonna work a cliffhanger tonight <laughs> um but there he was i just wanted to introduce <laughs> fucking bill burr to his new staff like we oh we will we have no idea this is happening no i know but i was just like yeah we'll just get that done and they'll be like we'll go back pass down the road and that's the end of the session it's like it's like the great unknown that's like when when Neppy went over to kokanee and was like just be safe like don't die while i'm gone <laughs> so what you're saying is you jinxed it i did not um because i'm a good cleric and i left him with diamonds so like here's the real twist we're gonna see yeah is they're gonna take care of the sentient malevolent blizzard no problem we're gonna come across unexpected problems in wolfreen and we're the ones who's gonna die i don't think i mean safe and yeah. yang dead in safe and gar yang i was saying codas has gotten the dwarves on his side the ghost dwarves he has broken into the, into the brain drug uh, compartment. He's taken all the drugs. He's, he's thinking four parallel universes ahead of us. <laughs> he sees the Matrix. He is yeah. the Matrix. <laughs> he just becomes Tim and he destroys us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We also met Wax. Uh, 
a fantastic love, new NPC. I love Wex. We needed a sexy tiefling in this campaign. We have not had a, like, we've had, like, you know, there's been a lot of tieflings in the campaign. There's never been, like, an archetypically, like, sexy tiefling, and I'm like, this is great. This is very good. He's awesome. I love I, him. When, the second that he met Nappy, I was yeah. like, oh, is Tim going to, like, try and drive a wedge? Like, is he going to play this sort of, like, card of, like, trying to drive a wedge between uh, Nappy and Kokanee? And then I, yeah. and then I was like, oh, he's going to do it by like going after Neppy. And then more like, no, came, I was like, oh, he's going to go after Kogany. Hell yeah, brother. Well, you know, we could be talking about a throuple situation. Like, I don't want to assume anything. Neppy uh, doesn't get jealous. She just doesn't. And she no, would so, also so just So we're like, realistically talking a throuple situation. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, like, also, like, this is Neppy's, like, Neppy's relationship with Kokani is her first and only relationship. Like, and that's the only relationship she will ever have. Like, if there was something happened that, like, I've already, like, thought about it a lot. And it's, like, if something happened in the universe where Neppy and Kokani, like, weren't together anymore, they decided to end. Oh, my God, I would be, one, heartbroken for my girl. But, two, like, that would be it for her. She wouldn't. Maybe pursue wet. relationship again no i mean you say no. that but sometimes no. but sometimes you know wax is awfully charming uh i don't how does so. letters feel about the fact that he had no interest in letters relieved jealous uh i'll be real with you uh, letters oblivious. was not oblivious. okay with anybody who makes their home at that camp so like mm -hmm. like when he was like nice to meet you i was like yeah all right fuck off like <laughs> It occurs to me now that because the dealings in the books are so, like, underhanded, people might just think it's, like, a shitty mining camp and they might not know how exploitative it is. And so, but let, much like Sean, Letters maybe wasn't there yet when he met Wex. So, as such, Wex is not in the black, as, as so to speak. He's, uh, he's, it's okay if we're just work, like, we work together, but we're not friends. You know what I mean? Right. Nebby's just like so excited to see another tiefling because they're you know tieflings are like not common on Wolfar at all they're more common in the Amunke and in Cinderfall and Clore very common in Clore and Cinderfall um and then obviously where she's from but yeah never did not expect it's been like other than Philanus it's been like months since Zeppi's met another tiefling not to mention a male tiefling I don't it's been probably years since she's talked to like another like a male tiefling so like she's just like oh this is great we must be friends we have to talk like we have we we you are from the amon k this is means that like we have some sort of compatriot ship and i think at her heart neppy's like a girl who just she's so like she's wise but she's not worldly mm. you know what i mean so it's like Difficult difficulties <laughs> are fun. Yes, um, we're managing. Boo. We're managing. Okay. Sorry, what were you saying, Yannis? I just what think about? that, I think Neppy clocked the flirtation this time, though, because you were very particular in the fact that your handshake was uh, businesslike. Yeah, she's she's learning, I think. And, like, you know, I wouldn't even call, like, like she and Kokani are, I suppose, like, playful with each other. But like there was no I don't, flirting. I would say it was just a little like, oh, I have these feelings for you. Here's a letter. I'm in love with you. Um, I don't know if there yeah. was like big. Old I think Kokanee's probably as bad at it as you are. And like you're perfect. both you're both homeschool kids, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So, <laughs> homeschool kids is like the perfect description of of Nepenthe. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she's totally a homeschool kid. Absolutely. Big homeschool energy. <laughs> Big homeschool energy, for sure. Yeah, One it's, thing, go ahead. Sean. Sorry, no, you keep going. I'm gonna take this in a different direction. You um, keep going, let's find this direction. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was something that like, I always try and keep in mind when playing Nepi too, is that she has such strong convictions about things that she knows, but that her scope, like the scope of things that are familiar to her, very small. Like she is, her knowledge base is very large because she's an avid reader, has a good memory and has some wisdom and, you know, no wherewithal to put stuff together. But like, 
I think that's one of the things that I love about playing her is that she just gets to be fascinated by the world all the time. Like, especially when we were in the Storm Warden, like talking to Garrosh about the Temple of Cord and their religion and just being like, there's a horn that can be heard around the world and it summons someone that nobody's ever met, maybe since the Dawn War. Like what? That's so cool. And I think it's I also, also a testament to like Tim's lore. That's just me ever mm-hmm. just being like, ah! We never talked about it last time, but it's so wild that it's like, it's not like the same person. Like there's a yeah. whole like thing, right? Where they're like, you know, it, you take it's one wild. apprentice yeah, and then you're, you're the, you're the breaker of wills until you die. And then your apprentice becomes the breaker of wills. They hide, they get a new apprentice, train that apprentice their whole life. And it just happens forever. So if an elf is the breaker of wills, they're pretty discouraged to get like a human as their apprentice. Huh? Unless it's, unless it's like right at the end of their lifespan. Yeah. Unless they're just fucking yeah, Yoda, probably. like ready yeah. to go. In which I case, what happened to the last apprentice? I don't know. I like, I'm so curious that like, it, I mean, it would be a really, I, who knows if the horn of war is going to be called, but like, it's a really cool piece of foreshadowing that like. Don't forget about it. Cause you guys can yeah. use that in like the level end 20 game, right? BEG. Just like I can, I can send to garage and be like, you're going to, this is going like, to be that thing. This horn. is going to be like, that thing where you guys are like, you guys finish the campaign and people are in the chat being like, why didn't you guys sound the fucking horn? Neppy would never forget that. I, I will not forget that. No. Letter is 100% will. That's okay. Like, <laughs> my Neppy, like, I have um, in my book, like, an ongoing to-do list of things that, like, Neppy the end asks. The end game to-do list? Yeah. Sound things, shit gets bad, sound the horn of war. Or ask, please. Somebody please can sound the horn of war. Um, but I, Sean, you, you were going to say something. Please go ahead with it. This oh. is just me waxing about Neppy. Well, well, no, it's just one thing that I liked... Uh, last session that we don't often get to do was a lot of uh, uh, insight checks, a lot of vibe checks, oh, which yes. is cool. And like a lot of perception checks. And it really made me realize, because uh, like Letters is like a trusting guy or whatnot. And there's that thing with Finn where he's like, I know you trust these guys, but please don't. <laughs> and Letters like, but why though? I don't get it. Um, is that, because I can't, because he has a minus one to insight, so he can't insight people. So it's, it's, I, I realize it's like, because he trusts people or doesn't immediately based on their actions. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, this guy's saying something. I can't, I don't know if he's lying or whatever, but like, what are you actually doing here? Fuck you, yeah. man. Well, like, I mean, Finan also isn't wise, like has a negative to his wisdom as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, I think with the way that Adam plays him, it's just kind of like, he doesn't trust anybody and potentially doesn't have the wisdom to see that he can trust people um Ooh. is kind of how I, I see it that it's just like you know I think it it takes a lot of it takes a lot of like life experience especially if you've had some of the um things around his upbringing bringing that Finn and has to trust anybody you know like you have an abusive parent you lose um you know your primary attachment figure at a young sorry flipping into therapist mode like when you you, (laughs) when you lose your primary attachment figure at a young age being his mother it's like it would mean that the world is a pretty scary place and then you're also thrust into these like big life world changing situations with a group of people who you desperately want to trust but like don't know how so I don't know I kind of see maybe that's me stretching it but like I think that that's that's what I kind of think about Finnan and his like lack of trust for people and it's, I think it's something that Neppy's clocked and to be like, dude, you can trust us. Like mm. we love you and are here for you. And you may not trust us all the time and that's fine. But like, we're going to be consistent for you. Like we're going to be stable for you and present for you. So when you can start to trust us, do that because we're here for you. I, we spoke a bit about it last week about the, the letters fin um, kind of like clashes. Uh, and I felt like, this was just another sort of like little pebble to the pile. Um, this, that whole confrontation of the way you guys go about your situations. Um, Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah, even, even as small, even as small as the, as even as small as the, uh, the trying to, he didn't try to poach the employee, but like literally the sort of like, Oh, when you're done, I'll hire you to my rival company. Um, it, it's great. I love this sort of like, it it reminds me a lot about uh, like having a little brother where it's like, you know, 
I want to be like the older brother, but I also want to beat the older brother and mm -hmm. the older brother's trying to be supportive, but also like find your own fucking deal. Um, There's only was, so much that letters can lean in to Cor oh fuck. What's his name? Cornelius. Yeah. Lean over to Cornelius through the ether yeah. and be like, brand. No. like yeah. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's a fantastic, I, I really enjoy more and more the sort of like uh, building underlying like conflict tension thing. And I'm super curious to see where that goes, because generally a lot of the sort of like inter-party uh, conflicts have been, I don't want to say resolved, but like they're pretty mellow right now. I mean, Nepi gets along with pretty much everybody, like everyone gets along with pretty much everybody except for Letters and Finnan, who kind of grate one another once in a while. But so I think if, if you don't have that kind of, like, I think that's something that, I mean, maybe I'm, you know, um, tooting our horn here, but I think that that's human. I think that that's so human and so relatable that it's like there's a group of six people who are with each other 24 hours a day. They are, they're united by a common goal, but they're still people. Like, they still have things that, like, Nepi was furious. Nepi was so mad about the books that Finnan took. Nepi was, Nepi was really mad. Nepi was really upset. She was just like, damn it, dude, you have to tell me because I can help you. And I was saying this after stream last night um, when we were just kind of debriefing that, like, I felt, I felt kind of bad because I, I metagamed for myself because Nepi was going to take out her gun and shoot the book cabinet. And I didn't because I knew Finnan was standing, like Emma knew Finnan was standing there, but I didn't. Um, and I should have, because <laughs> it would, because like, Nebby had no idea Finnan was there. Like she has a very high passive perception. Shit, shit would have gone wild yeah. if you I shot mean, the book cabinet. Would have taught a very valuable lesson about letting people know when you're invisible. Yes. Like, sometimes you gotta touch the stove to know when it's hot, you know Right. I mean? Sometimes like, you just gotta let your cleric <sighs> shoot you, you know, like. <laughs> One thing that just occurred to me in terms of, Letters and Finnan uh, is that like philosophically, like our styles of living are opposites. Cause his whole thing is like misdirect, be invisible, like ha 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 ha. And Letters is like, I'm loud, you can't miss me, and I'm coming straight for you. Like, <laughs> letters is a freight train, and I love that about Letters. Cause I, I fucking. That. We were talking to the what's her nuts, the the the, the dragonborn po Petra, Petra, and everyone's like, "Oh, we're doing this, we're doing this," and I'm like, "Fucking, we're hanging around, like let's just, we're yeah. just here we're to looking get for a guy. Let's move on. Yeah, we're looking for Sarah. Like, got to no, cool. cool. We got to get her brother, and then we're get, leaving. Like, why why are we hiding from some fucking <laughs> merc? Who gives a shit? I mean, I guess that's one thing too. Like, I was like, the mercenaries don't give a fuck. They care about money, and that's why everyone was like, "We're not gonna pay you. We have to do this." And I was like, "No, no, just pay the woman. Like, she will give us the information. She'll give any." anybody the information it's just gonna cost us a little bit of money and I guess that's my whole thing with like in my previous in the previous campaigns I've played I've always played characters that are very much just like wheelers and dealers and will bargain and will be like how much money do we have all the time and Nephi's like I don't give a fuck about money you can't take it with you it doesn't matter <laughs> like so it's like oh we need to pay this person let's pay this person I don't care before we get into tonight's topic yes. I do feel we need to just bring up the fact that it was Awesome that Callie finally found Bilber oh, after so long. So um, long. It's, uh, yeah, it's these wonderful little like sprinkling background moments uh, in the story that, that are yeah. is so fantastic. And I mean, Bilber is just a joy. What a sweet um, baby boy. He must there's be part of me. Costs. There's part of me that's, wa that's waiting for like a, uh, the other shoe to drop with him. Um, I kept, I kept having this sort of like, gut feeling when you guys were up uh talking with petra that he was going to be like oh yeah and then there's all of uh bilber's gambling debts and like all of his you know getting into fights and destruction of property charges or i keep waiting to find out like something about him that sort of is like you know uh it's easy for someone to fall back into the sort of like innocent younger brother role when you haven't seen you know a family member in a long time yeah. but like he might not be that person anymore and i kept being like there's something here like there's give, there's give some time yanis because if yeah. there's one thing i know about tim is he loves giving npcs secrets and yes this is not just some you know uh spur of the moment npc there's something yeah uh with See, Bilber that we haven't uh, met. it could be positive or negative totally mm -hmm. you know what i mean he could turn out to be just another great you know person 
uh, which, you know, being related to Cali or not related to Cali, but being of the same origin of Cali, you know, is, is probable. Um, but there's also a chance that he's not, but I just felt like there was so much more to him that, you know, we were barely scratching the surface. Um, I can't wait for them to get like some time together, like, so that they can have more than a like, Hey, we're taking you from this. You want to come? Great. Cool. We're going to take you to Wolfrey and you can live here now. And that's great. Right. (laughs) You're good. Yeah. The second he was like, the second he was like, um, yeah, the, the, told her about his situation about the money on paper was really great but you know it takes a long time to feel the logic like as soon as he said that i knew exactly what this camp was up to oh, and like the there was like i i love lennon but her sort of like innocence in the moment of being like oh i'll pay for your debt and you can keep working here and i was like what are you doing <laughs> just you got to take him away you can't just leave him to work in the mine um but well, we got that, we that, got there but there was that, that innocence of like yeah the sweetness of yeah Cali. of like this the, of like you you chose to be here so therefore you must want it i guess so i'll support you in it but like there was a moment where i was like no <laughs> don't send the poor child back into the mines but just pay off his debts um yeah gosh because there would have been more things that he would have you know they would have found reason to charge him for and he exactly. would have never made it into the barracks and there would no. have been something because you know like that you know bureaucratic little piece of shit would have been like oh well, you paid off your debts but here's all of this other stuff and oh now you can't move into the barracks because you didn't work your way in there and now you have to stay in the shack actually you have to give up your shack and you gotta go live in a fucking tent or something along those lines and i was just like i was like we no no like we can't save everybody at this camp but we can take him and we can get him out and like oh, i'm excited to see the mad. war between the dresda trading company and this uh mining conglomerate it is going to be an the the game I'm is just going to tend them. the game is just going to turn i think like everyone's expecting like the 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 end game bb bbeg fight to be like uh you know a massive dragon or whatever but it's just going to turn into like a big game of like business monopoly where it's a game of thrones it's a game of yeah thrones it's gonna end right? up yeah it's turned like sean's going real little finger on us um <laughs> and it's all about the deals he makes and i love it i would love, love to speak on that but sadly it is it's actionable. Actionable. that's, that's why i didn't that's why i didn't table. even bother to ask <laughs> i'm starting to figure out i'm starting to figure out what you're willing to tell us um but uh should we get into tonight stuff let's do I it i want to hurt him i want to hurt him so bad but anyways <laughs> let's roll that let's roll, let's that, roll, roll that, that intro, intro. <laughs> okay announcements announcements how did we get here em who helped us how, I know. Who are but, the people that we owe? I mean, oh, us as humans, I'm going to talk about our sponsors first. That's, what, helped I, that's us. what I was trying to go with. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, so a big thank you. Oh, no, we're losing everyone. Oh, we're nope. losing Giannis everyone. Is still Giannis here. is good, back. Good, good, good. Good. Oh, my gosh. Um, a big thank you to our sponsors and partners, Legend Craft, makers of fine Craft. RPG woodworking products. Um, they have an amazing Kickstarter that's going to be coming out right now, which is their health and spell trackers um, in a whole bunch of different selections of wood. And they're all made with their, like, really thin magnet metal. It's amazing. And it's got, like, a customizable logo on the back. And all of the art for those logos is done by Tiana, our amazing artist, who we also love. Big shout outs to Tiana because she's the best too. Um, so if you're interested in their stuff, head on over to their Instagram. Also subscribe to their email newsletter and you can find the link to do that in their bio. We love them. And if you like anything that they do, enter the code Blackwater for 5% off because all of that stuff helps us and it helps them and they're a great Canadian company and we love them. So Wing Armory, uh, makers of fine paper products for your RPG campaign planning, lore keeping experience. Um, they have a uh, partnership going on right now with Grimbeard Letter for their lore keepers bundle. It's like three books and a uh, case for them. They're mwah, beautiful. My lore keeper brain just goes pew, 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 pew whenever I see them. So if you like anything that they do, um, enter the code Blackwater at checkout for 10% off. Uh, also a big shout out to our dice goddess, Keisha. She's the best and lovely. She posted some spooky, pretty dice up in her shop. So if you're interested, I don't think there might be one or two sets still available. She's also doing raw sets right now. So if you've ever wanted to like finish and polish and paint your own dice, she'll walk you through how to do that with dice she's already made. So you can head on over to her Instagram, fairydragon underscore 
dice. Uh, and then Miss Marston, uh, Tiana is our artist, so it's underscore Marston on Instagram. And I have seen some brand new art that she has in the works for some commissions and fun things. Um, it's really, really great. I'm really excited to see it. Um, other announcements. Uh, Wednesday, we have a character development uh, with mm. Tiana. She is joining myself and Jen and Len to talk all things, you know, advice and life. Um, so if you have any questions, Cody's going to pop the link in the chat right now for our survey. You're welcome to go fill in some questions in there. It's all anonymous and the ladies of Blackwater are here because we care about you. Um, so we're excited to do that. Um, and then Saturday, obviously we have our main campaign coming back. Um, also, just before this, I participated in a panel with our wonderful friends over at Fabled 42, um, talking about the art of role play. So if you missed it, never fear, it's up for VOD on their channel. It's twitch.tv slash Fabled 42. Um, and it's the art of role playing panel with me and a whole bunch of other people. It's gonna be real fun. Um, and then uh, I announced this on, on Saturday, but I'll announce it again. Our monthly one shot this month is Werewolf with a Werewolf. Wolf. Our wonderful friend Adam DeMarco from The Order uh, is going to be joining us on uh, October 28th for a spooky round of werewolf GM'd by yours truly. Um, it's going to be very, very fun. So please come hang out with us on that day. And we will, of course, be doing a uh, session on Halloween Our, with costumes. Of course, we will be going to the nines trying to figure out and as a uh, no, I'm not going to spoil what we are all going to be at this point. I'm not going to do it. Um, so yeah, so that's what we've got so far. Uh, and I think I think that's all I've got for announcements. Everything else is escaping me. So let's hop into the past. Let's do it. How did we get here? Last time we were under Barnwich, we're in the meat prison. We're yes. fighting brain eaters. Yes. Those those mind flayers. Yes. We 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 got the dude who's yeah. hiding out. Yeah. We met fucking Yana's dad. Hell we yeah. Cured the the goobs in the yes. eyes. Yes. Um, just as a, as a content together. warning for folks tonight, we will be talking about a little bit of body horror stuff um, regarding some brains um, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So if it, there's at any point that you have to tune us out, um, do that for whatever feels comfortable for you. Just a little bit of a content warning about body horror stuff. So yeah, you're right, Sean. Like last, this is part four of the Barn Witch arc. So if you've missed parts one, two, and three, you can head on over to our history and lore section here on Twitch and all of the truncated Chatwater episodes are there for your viewing pleasure, strictly talking about the Barn Witch Skip arc. the banter, we just the, get the lore. We skip the banter on both sides and there's just the lore in the middle for you. Um, and they're also over on YouTube as well. And the ones here on Twitch are here permanently too. I feel like that's kind of when you take the pit out of the avocado. That's, yes. <laughs> that's when you're watching the, yes. the lore. That's, that's why I created it, so that people who are like, give me the lore are in there too. I mean, I hope some people stick around for the banter, and there's banter in between, but I'm hoping people stick around for the lore. Um, so last episode of Chatwater we did encompass sessions 51 and 52. Um, we were down in the Underdark, uh, below Barn, which stumbled on what seems to be an extensive mind flayer colony that's taken up in residence in ancient city where Relauvin used to live. Finn is patron. Um, we're exploring. We disrupt some sort of like satellite transmission signal dish. We find the meat prison, which is a building full of caged citizens of Farm Witch, one of which being Yana's dad. We have to fight our way through like multiple flares, ogres, a giant, and we see the Ulatharid, this like head honcho mind flayer who manages to escape during battle. Yana's dad fills us in on Fildo. He's behind all of this and doing it for Garl. Uh, in attempts to bring Garl Glittergold back to the material plane. We also find these three houses that seem to be holding people who are undergoing seratomorphosis. Uh, sorry, I called it seratogenesis last week. It is seratomorphosis, which is the process by which people are turned into mind flayers. I got corrected after the stream, so I am <laughs> making the addendum now. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we managed to rescue three who are in the early process of by an expert use of divine neurosurgery uh, through Kokanee casting spirit gardens, and then uh, killed the other two who are too gone for us to save. Um, and in the last house, we come across Zelix, this gnome who has undergone a ceratomorphosis but retained his size and much of his personage, who agrees to be kind of an ally of necessity for us as we continue to travel through the Underdark and try and figure out what the flip is going on down here. Um, so yeah, so as we start session 53, which is titled For Those in Need, um, we, this was actually, Oh, this was a year ago. This was Halloween, uh, 2019. Um, Sean, I think you came dressed to my house as Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, everyone came dressed as their characters, and I missed that memo. Yeah. So like, uh, Matt had come up with this wonderful Matt's like, coconut costume shirt. was so good. <laughs> 
like everyone looked amazing and I'm like I'm Winnie the Pooh and I'm like <laughs> I, I actually still you have your honey pot I got my honey pot which uh, <laughs> sits up here it was my really little good. Are your ears in there my I keep all my my bits together <laughs> we're ready to go I mean it was probably like a close to, the close-ish to letters as you were gonna get for that <laughs> It was a very strange reimagining of this is letters. my letters costume. I mean, your costume was really good. You were in like yellow pants and a red turtleneck. I, look, I think it was a good Winnie the Pooh. It's it not about beautiful. the the quality Winnie the of the Winnie the Pooh. Is the content of the uh, the, the the costume and the context good. of the party. But good. the point is, big spooky fight Halloween night. Big Whoa. spooky fight. It was this was this was pretty intense. Um, so going from the book, um, that little pseudo dragon that we had found, that Callie had found dead. Uh, she was definitely dead. It had died in the fight and she was devastated about it. Um, so we tried uh, locate creature on the Ilitharid and they were gone. Um, and we discuss a bit of a plan. We try and fortify the meat prison and then go deeper into the Underdark to try and find the the elder brain because we had a sense that it was going to be around here somewhere maybe it wasn't here maybe it wasn't um so kokini Callie, and finnan try and find some fighters um Nepis goes around and starts trying to heal people and finding healers and like getting people together um olin wildcloak uh, yana's dad uh, she casts life transference on him because uh, olin's still looking pretty rough and tim was like yeah i think you gave olin a few years back of his life. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> That's really good. Um, so we, they don't have anything. They like have nothing down here. And we realized that that giant gelatinous cube uh, that we had come across before, all of their belongings, all of their weapons and everything had been put in there and dissolved. Um, so they don't have anything. Um, we arm the people as best we can with some like rudimentary weapons we have in the bag of holding. And uh, Nepi gives the Furbolg, um, What's her name? Was it Tora or Torna? Torna. It's That's Torna. It. Torna. Uh, and uh, she starts flirting with letters, and it's great. Mm -hmm. um, and so she, Nepi gives uh, the healer uh, two vials of white water, and is basically like, do what you can with this. It exponentiates healing magic. So um, we, Nepi takes a peek at Finnin's eyes again. Um, and she tries to like see if she can heal them and she can't um, there's no pupils at all like they're gone uh, his eyes are completely like burned out and she's like okay well I can't heal them right now but at some point I'd like to um, so we go to this like temple it looks like and it looks like an old temple of Lolf um, the spider queen so we the doors are set with like to pry open they look like spider jaws it's gross um, and uh, the door is trapped, disarmed. Kokanit attempts to pick the lock and was not as good at lock picking as he is now, which is, I don't know if he's much better. He gets- Nah, he's just luckier these days. He's just luckier these days. Um, he gets pricked by something poisonous again. Um, and his like brain starts doing the scramble thing and he's got like word salad and he's like, can't speak properly. And Nepi, uh, Nepi cures disease on him and it won't work. And then- uh, Kokini did something. Well, I don't remember why Kokini did this, but he shot his gun right next to Finnan's ear and deafened him. And I don't know why he did that. Um, I think that was a bit of like dick tugging back and forth. Oh, okay. Where like one thing led to another and like little prank, little prank. Uh oh. We Shoot my gun far. by your Dad's ear. Mad. Dad's mad yeah. now. Um, yeah. So then I was just like, oh my God, can we stop? And so I like, I had to heal his, like I heal, healed Finn in with life transference and fixed his eardrum and was like, can you stop it? We're in the underdark. Can you all just stop this right now, please? I only have limited number of spell slots. <laughs> like, my God, please stop. Um, so we go inside and we see this like relief of the floor of Lolith um, leading these people through a cave system. Um, and in this temple, we find this tunnel that seems to be leading down below it and we're just like oh shit and Zelix is like I think it's down there I think the elder brain is down there we gotta go we gotta go and we try and convince him to wait and we're just like you know like give us a little bit of time here and he's like no 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 no. we have to go now we have to go now and then Finnan is like I have to go look at the rest of the city and we were like 
Sean, do you remember this? Do you remember this part about what was happening here? Dish me on. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Finnan was like, we got all these people that we've armed to our best abilities, given them some magical items, pretty potent. They're yeah. barricaded in the house, but we don't know that the entire cave system is clear. To which Finnan says, oh, we should go take care of that. To which the rest of the party says, we've got this hyper-powered psychic Yoda who wants to go kick ass right now. Also, that's the direction we're going. Yeah. If we take out an elder brain, probably all the things that work for it also die. Yes. And Finnan said, no, I want to enact change immediately to make sure that this entire cave system is safe. And everyone says, please don't do that. And he says, tough titties. Uh, and uh, he goes off on his own because his whole thing is he's good at being scouting and not being seen. Uh-huh. You're never going to believe what happened, Yanis. Um, so <laughs> never going to believe. Hold on. So, hold on. So <laughs> Finnan didn't listen to the group and did his own thing. This yeah. is true. Surely it went off without a hitch. Well, it, I mean, let, did. Me, Finan's, let me Finan's tell random, you. Finnan's random things never, never catch up with him. Let he found some mind flayers, and without them seeing him, he said, okay, I can take care of this. And he one-shotted <laughs> each of them individually without them being aware of him. Yeah. Uh, and he did that from house to house to house as we all waited. We got a long Excuse rest me. in mm -hmm. as he cleared out the entire cave system. Uh, no, 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 but look. People I, were safe. So he found mind flayers, but he didn't then decide to, like, you know what, I can handle them by myself. Did he? That would be... So let no, me tell you what happened. He got spotted immediately. <laughs> so he heads over to these group of three buildings, um, and he takes. Sean's not sore life. about it. We're all. It's not only, sore it's only about been it. a year. We're all not sore about it. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, so he heads over. He summons his phantom steed. Shadow. This was the very first uh, uh, appearance of Shadow Fact. It was apparently supposed to be Shadow Facts, but it was now shadow all he facts. knows is the penumbra that's his only yeah, fact it's called the penumbra um so he rides over to this group of like three buildings that are intact the he rides that's not yeah. stealthy it's a silent shadowy horse i don't know <laughs> um the interiors be done in this dark metal it's pretty like cold and like moist on the inside there's jars with small brains and then there's like taxidermied rats that are just in like these little dioramas on like chairs and stuff. It's really weird. Um, when Finn is looking at the dioramas, he has to make an intelligence save and it's like, it's shocked by this wave of psychic energy. He has to roll initiative um, and he's essentially pulled outside of one of these houses. There's three illithid, illithid around him. Um, he tries to misdirect and run away and it doesn't work. He gets um, psychic blasted. They stun him a bunch of times, and they crit on an extract brain hit. So, a, like, when an illithid has you grappled and goes to itch, eat your brain, it's 10 d 10 uh, damage, and if you die, your brain gets ripped out of your head. If you drop to zero hit points, your brain gets ripped out of your head. Um, so, Tim... The, the illithid who ate him crit on that one. It was a natural 20. So it was 20, 20 d 10. 20 d 10. Um, so he was just dead. He was like 90, 96 damage um, in one turn. Oh, can you stop that? Sorry, my cat is scratching the inside of Tim's sound booth. Um, and it just ripped his brain out and ate his brain. And we were like, because none of us were there none of us were there and we were just like ho-hum waiting near the edge of the elder brain and then tim was like tim what what could have happened was tim was just like yeah you finn doesn't come back for a while what do you do um but tim being a very benevolent dm uh shadow faxed uh whinnied uh as it disappeared and like let out a horrendous neigh as it was like gone um and we run the second and we run over we see his body this crumpled mass and then neppy with her passive perception like start or her like her perception starts taking a look around and we see these three figures in the stalactites um and we start rolling initiative um so we managed to kill them all and we go to flint finnan and neppy's like i can't bring him back like this like also big body horror content warning right now um i will let you folks know i'll give a wave when we you can come back in um 
So Nephi's like, I can't bring him back because his brain's not in his body. Like if his brain's not in his body, I'm going to revive, like revive, like raise dead because it's been past a minute. Raise dead will be ineffective here because it won't work. He'll be uh, just a body. It'll be nothing. So we start going over to each of the mind flares and Kokani and Nepi start cutting open stomachs. We try and find the stomachs of these mind flayers to be like, which one's eaten? Um, and f- thankfully, two of them had not eaten uh, and were apparently hungry uh, or had like remnants of like old food in there and not a lot of food. And then one of them, the one that almost got away, because one of them was trying to fly away and plane shift out and we managed to keep it because I was like, no, we have to keep them all here because we need his brain. A casual counter spell. A casual counter spell. It was super great, super clutch. Um, so Nepi and Kokani managed to like remove the stomach from one of these illithid, the last illithid. And there's like, there's chunky brain bits in there. And we're like, okay, okay. So Kokani takes off his shirt and uses his shirt like a sieve. And we like filter out to brain soup. A cheesecloth. Um, a cheesecloth, yep. Uh, and then we then we just start, Nepi just starts carefully, like a puzzle, piecing his brain back together. Um, and there's, we realize that there's, once we've got the brain back together, there's a piece of brain in there that's the wrong color. But it seems to fit. So Nephi's like, I gotta, I just gotta do it. Like, I can't, I can't take that out. Cause what if that's his brain and that's an important piece? Like, If you, if you jump back in, cause it looked like M was wa- waving. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got really nervous. Um, so I'll do we, this. I'll do a big old. Sean, I'll do a big old wave. So um, Cause M we, likes try, to gesticulate. We, we try to enact the ritual. Nepi basically appeals to him and says, you know, your mother would be really proud of you. We're not angry at you. Please just come back. Um, I'm not your boss. I'm your friend. I just want to keep you safe. Please come back. Uh, and she rolls a natural 20 on her check, her persuasion check to bring him back. Spooky calls him a little punk, uh, and attempts to intimidate him to come back and rolls a dirty 20 to bring him back. And then Callie asks him to stand with her at her wedding. Um, and is like, please, I need you to come back. It succeeds. Uh, he's revived. His glasses are broken. Kokanee mends them, but he is like, at one hit point and brain scrammed and is like, I need to rest. And we're like, okay, okay, we're going to take you back to, you can come back. You can come I back I think that's now. all the, that's all the body that's horror, all the body horror for, now. The, yes. for now. Yeah. Um, and so we're, you knocked two, you knocked out two of those mind flayers during that fight with Steel Wind Strike. Like you killed two of them. Yeah. One. And I fuck up wizards. You did. That's all squid boys are. Callie got dominated in that fight. This was one of the first times she's been dominated. And one of the mind flayers told her to kill the small one, meaning Spooky. Um, so one of my big questions in here is why do they care so much about Spooky? What's the long game? Uh, those are my like actual written notes at this one. Oh, and I got the kill on one of them with Guiding Bolt. You must have got one. I got another one. And yeah, you got two. I got one with Guiding Bolt. So anyway, so we get, um, Finnan is like there with us, but he's just like chilling and it's just like, ah, I can't do anything. We look around these buildings. There's like a bunch of these taxidermied rats. Um, we see these like recliners, these like reclining chairs that are hovering. So these There's... taxidermy rats, are they like the ones that, uh, that Steve Carell makes in that movie? I don't know which Remember, movie you're talking about. Meet, meet the... There's a movie where Steve Carell makes uh, taxidermied hamsters in like nativity scenes and stuff. Have you guys not seen this movie? No. But no, but that sounds pretty much exactly pretty like what we're talking okay, about. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Finnan, when he comes back, um, he has a splitting headache um, and also now has access to the cantrip Mind Sliver. So there's that. Um, and he, yep. Yeah, he's got And that. he learned his lesson and never wandered off or made an impulsive no, decision again? never again. Um, we, in the next house, we find a bunch of books that are covered with like an animal skin of some kind, all written in 
um, qualit, which is the uh, illicit language. There's like clear liquid in a jug, some metal instruments, and what seems to be a dentistry kit. It's like, and we, we stumble upon that. We think these are like the illicit's houses. We think they live here, and we're like, this is bad. We hate this. And then in the last house, there's a thing of spell components. Um, there's this jagged blue gem. Oh yeah, this fucking thing. Well, it doesn't activate yet. Um, there's this jagged blue gem, and then there's like this little mithril scale. There's a bunch of other stuff that we keep, and they're all like spell components for various different types of spells. Um, so we take Finn in to see the statue of Relauvin before we head back to the meat prison. Um, and then Zelix is waiting for us and is like, time to go, time to go. So we're already like, we've been in this fight. We've been in one fight. We don't have time to rest. Um, so we head on down and that was the end of episode 53. Finnan does not come with us into the basement or like downstairs below the Where'd you leave him? Uh, he stayed at the meat prison. Uh, I think Adam at this point, um, took a break or he was had some shows or something like that. So he wasn't at session. So we just, Finnan stayed at the meat prison. He stayed to keep the people safe. He stayed to keep the people safe. And, uh, we went down to fight the elder brain. Can we, I want to just derail quickly. Please derail. Uh, Please. We, you reminded me when we were talking about the the the, le- the fur covered book. Yes. Um, the fur covered dragon from mentioned in last session. Uh, that sounds very intriguing. Yeah. Uh, at first, I thought he might be describing Task uh, mm-hmm. because it's I a dragon, that too. A, a dragon that you know was different. Um, but a fur covered dragon that I don't think I've ever seen any sort of depiction of a of a fur covered dragon. It's, it's. We'll probably need some fur to stay warm up there in the cold. It's some, really fucking far north. Some dragon fur uh, clothes you guys oh. gonna make after? Oh. Yeah, I was thinking clothes. if we see that dragon, I'm just gonna teleport us away. But dragon, dragon fur boots? We also Love don't know that. that dragon is evil. Could be like a, like a neutral or good dragon. We have no idea. Uh, I think True. it's from Tim's new book. I'm sorry. Could probably Not make sorry. boots out of it, regardless of its it could, yes. moral leanings. <laughs> also, like, listen, you seem great, but I really want a new pair of boots. boots. So, um, um, well, I guess Letters doesn't wear boots. It'd be more just like leg warmers. I was going to say like the hooves. Hooves covers, No, just it'll, be, it'll, be, little hooves. it'll be dragon dragon fur boots, but the fur will match so closely with his regular <laughs> fur that you won't even be able to tell that he's wearing boots. I'll know. Well, they're very it, comfy. It would probably be like white wouldn't it if it's in a snowy covered expanse the fur might be white it's true you guys just run you did run into a snow tiger that we never really spoke about no uh, wex just was just like yeah. snow that was covered. that was pretty badass of wex anyways wex is so, a badass with this owl i was like Ooh. the owl is sweet you guys I, no one I paid enough this. attention to the owl but the owl is is pretty dope I want 250 to gold owl. a day 250 <laughs> gold a day we don't got time to get but to listen him. listen 250 gold a day at first, I was like, man, that's a pretty steep price. But you guys are renting eight giant rams. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? And all the food and all the all gear supplies. and a guide. Like, it's, if you guys had to price out everything separately, like the cost of the rams alone yeah. would have been, you know. I was ready couple, just to buy those thousand. rams and just be like, done with it. Because, like, I guess, do we, my sense was like, is Wex getting paid essentially until he gets back to the camp? Because I'm like, I can't teleport. We can't teleport all these rams back, dude. Like we can't do that. We can no. teleport people. <laughs> Once we stop paying him, he just leaves. That's how it right. works. Right, and he's gonna so take. So we'll the just rams be like, back. "Thank you. Find your We're own done. way home, Goodbye. Wex. Goodbye, Wex. Goodbye, Wex. Take your rams. <laughs> Goodbye, Wex." <laughs> That's how that scene is gonna go down. Right. That's a little get, preview of action at the table. Just get Kokini to seduce him and lower the rate. I mean. That's up to Kokanee. Share, share a little sleeping bag with Wex, and then the ray comes <laughs> down a little bit. I mean, they are alone with uh, Callie and Finley right now. In a so cold cave. Cold, they have to take the clothes cave. off and huddle for warmth. I'm just saying, stuff can happen. It happened. You never know. Anyway, never back know. to Barmwich. Um, episode oh, 54. Yeah. This one is called It Was All for Garl. Um, so we, sh- we decide to short rest. We convince like that kills everyone. people, Garl. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I love uh, that meme. No, uh, so good. Uh, we short. We like convince Zelix to be like, please, can we just short rest? We've just had this crazy fight. Can we please go? So we go down. Oh. Um, 
and letters. This was the time you ask uh, Kokanee and Nepi if they're a thing. We were like, are you guys, are you guys a thing? And we were like, yeah, yeah. And you were like, oh, great, great. I want to hear more about this. Tell me how you fell in love. What, what is going on? What's happening here? Um, so we, we that's, start. that's the time to talk about that. Short rest? Absolutely. Oh, it was a short rest. It wasn't yeah. like on the way down. No, no, it was really oh, okay. short rest. Like, tell yeah, me about your, you were like, thing. tell me about your love. What's, what's happening here? This is cute. Yeah, I love this. this. Cute. Yeah. Because I have a question we were still you. relatively new to the party at this point. Yeah, this was like my first like big, big arc for you. The big arc, yeah. 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 I have a question for you about your gun. Um, the gun? Yeah. The doom is tube. It, is it the very tube. much is it very much like um the Romeo and Juliet guns from the last Berman Leonardo DiCaprio movie oh, where yeah. they're like they're like sword Baz guns? Lerman. <laughs> what did I say? Laz Berman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like yeah, his it's, brother, Laz Berman. His um, Laz Berman and Baz Lerman. No, it's like a, it's a pistol, um, and it's like one shot, and then I have to reload it. But is um, it like I'm talking about like aesthetic wise? Oh, is it yeah. like from the movie where it looks like a sword? It's got all the like little metal plating and yeah, yeah. Is it's it like engraved? A, engraved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's got like iconography of Nymphysicate. The handle is bone, um, and it's like of blows. what animal? Who knows? Probably person. It's probably just a femur. <laughs> Might just be a person. Who knows these things? Only my goddess knows. Um, a god's a god's bone. Well, because it, it, it was like call like Nepi found it in um in the temple in Caradoc, and Tim was like, yeah, this this gun calls to you. There's lots of guns in here, but this one calls to you, just you. I was like, oh, okay, um, and it's got a purple crystal. Uh, in it that shines um it's not sericite it's another type of crystal that glows like a was like it's like a clear crystal but glows like a purpley color just like kokanee's glows blue um like arathis is when it glows purple right up the skit um so yeah so we start walking down this tunnel and clack clack is with us uh, and we hear this like whirring um and we feel like we're being followed like we're constantly looking over our shoulder feeling like we're being followed zelix detects this enchantment uh shield um and we managed to like go Callie throws a javelin and pierces a casing uh of this of this enchantment shield and the power like fizzles away letters checks for traps the tunnel splits into three there's like three sets of footprints down each tunnel they're identical um the wiggles goes down like a middle tunnel and then loops around so we managed to go down one of these tunnels there's a whole bunch of dispelling magic we walk down and then we're in these tunnels trying to figure out and then we're like we have no fucking idea where we're going we have no idea and we decide to inject letters with brain drugs hell um, yeah because we were just like yeah maybe this drug is from the brain of an illithid who knew what was happening down here because we didn't know how they worked at this point and i think it was like neppy and letters were basically just like this is logical this is logical like we're going to inject you with this drug so you're going to know where we're supposed to go, it'll be great. You'll know how to disassemble all these traps. It'll be awesome. So like Nebby <laughs> injects him with this brain distillate that is loaded in the, the syringe. Um, he has to make a con save. Uh, he succeeds and he gets proficiency with forgery kit. Hell yeah. He gets proficiency with forgery tools. So not helpful, but um, But great something. for me. But great for Sean. Because you <laughs> let us got proficiency with forgery tools now. So we keep going um, and... He, um, so we ask Zelix a little bit more about the like uh, illithid incub incubation process and he's being really truthful. Um, the incubation for illithid is a week long uh, and he was able to, he practiced magic before Zelix did. And so he was able to retain his arcane abilities, um, more like ability to cast spells like confusion, do some illusion magic. And he's chosen to resist the command of the elder brain because mind players can't. Uh, but Zelix is uh, resisting the command of the Elder Brain. So we go down this, like, we find, we come to this end point, and there's this slide. And we're like, oh, this is bad. This seems bad. It's the slide is going in and down. It's dark. Zelix goes down first, and there's a spawning pool below, which is like, there might be some more creepy, crawly, horror bits in there. Sorry. Um, there's a spawning Just evil pool. tadpoles. It's evil, evil tadpoles. Evil tadpoles. Um, so le Letters and Zelix go down first, uh, and Letters electrocutes the water, killing all zap, the tadpoles, zap, which is so smart. Um, and the, we feel this, like, creeping, Letters feels this creeping probe, like, into his mind. 
and he gets this like z psychic pulse that basically tells him welcome don't resist and it's just just like this like probe and this like voice in his mind telling him not to resist uh so Callie which and Spooky, if we know anything about letters is not on brand is not on letters brand. is big into resisting yes. that's the whole thing <laughs> We love acts of resistance. Um, so Callie and Spooky slide down. Um, Callie doesn't go into this like pit of gross rain juice water. Um, Kokanee goes down, Neppy climbs over. And then in the basement, we see Fildo and a mind flare. Fildo fucking thorn gauge and a mind the guy. The guy. We try and talk to him and we offer him an out, be like, please, let's just go peacefully. Like, you know what you've done. We need to take you out of here and you need to face, you know, repercussions for what you've done. And he's like, no, no, it's all for Garl. It's very important. And we're just like, dude, let us take you out of here. And there's like a flare with him. Philo tries to, Philo tries to silence us. Letters counterspells him. Callie bends some lightning and we're fucking in it. Um, there's a regular Illithid, Philo and the Elder Brain who are fighting us and Zelix is on our side. So Fildo thinks throughout the course of this fight, we start like hitting the elder brain and like pew, 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 the elder brain. And Fildo thinks it's Garl. Fildo thinks the elder brain is a god. Like he thinks it's Garl Glitter Gold. And like that. The god of the halflings. And we're and just like, like, what? You think this thing is a god? We're like, dude, this isn't a god. Like it's not. <laughs> um, and Spooky casts Otto's Irresistible Dance while he's in the uh, water like the, that the Elder Brain's in. So he just starts drowning. Um, and he manages to break the, uh, manages to like break that eventually. Uh, you know, and then Letters tosses him in the water. Um, and like- the This is the it. real origin of the get in the in pit the thing. Pit. Cause the Elder Brain is above a, a water, a, a pool of really like gross floating. brain juice. Yeah. <laughs> and so I believe uh, it was, he gets, I knock him into the pit. Yeah. Fucking spooky cast irresistible dance. He starts drowning. The elder brain has to use an action to like pull him out with its tentacles. Yeah. And we break the tentacles. So he goes, goes back, back in, in and the pit. drowning again. It was great. Everyone was, was having great. a great time. And like the, the elder brain was just constantly blasting us all with this like psychic energy. There was like walling, walling a force. They walled off a bunch of us from each other. The mind flayer tries to extract it, like Zelik's brain, but he manages to kill it and, and like get just get out alive. And then Callie and Neppy are faced off against one mind flayer. Kokanee's like behind the other one. Spooky's trying to corner Fildo like down a hallway. Letters is over on the other side and trying to get Fildo as well. Neppy tries to like block this mind flayer from getting Callie and it grapples her and it rips her brain out. Like it takes, and we're just like, holy fuck. We're like, no, this is so bad. One of the men, uh, mind flayers that had, like, ate Kelly's brain tried to plane shift out, and we, like, caught it before it did. Um, we, and then Phil went invisible. So, like, Callie's dead. This mind flayer next to her is dead, and Phil has gone. And we're like, oh, my fucking God. He can't get away. We cannot let him get away. So we, like, investigate around. Can I? He's, please. Can I? Yes, so, please. So, yeah. Fucking the Elder Brain is, is dead by like fucking hasted Kokanee doing oh, like 18 man. attacks in one turn. 20,000 attacks With in his one fucking turn. ice Bandit, spike yeah. that he fucking got like that fucking level. Um, but like we run down this hallway, we're like, where the fuck is this guy? Where the fuck is this guy? We're listening for him. And like we see at the end of the tunnel, there's this little underwater river. And there's just like a fucking like rowboat. Yeah, that's just A drifting. little empty rowboat drifting down the thing. And we're like, fuck, like. I take a crack at it with the fucking firebolt, misses. Someone else takes a shot at it, misses it so far away. And then Clack, oh. with his Wand of Wonder. Bless Clack, all the time. Casts a spell. And again, the Wand of Wonder, you roll a 1d100, and a random spell out of like 50 goddamn options happens. It just so happened, he cast Fairy, Fairy Fire, Fire on the boat. The one that lets you see invisible people. <sighs> So that boat Tim was, got Tim like rolled sunk. it and he was just like, oh my God. Oh my Real God. Real quick. <laughs> I think very much the same reaction we had when you succeeded your teleport last session. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> ooh, that was wild. Um, yeah. So we, so like Kokanee just like casts spiritual weapon and just like takes three like gunshots at him and just like smokes 
Sildo in it and he's dead. And then we managed to like go and get, um, Spooky uses like a spell that she has to slow the current letters, pulls the, um, pulls the gun, uh, Fol- Kokanee ends up killing uh, filled it with a natural 20 on one of his like gunshots and with like does like 50 something damage on it and we pull the uh thing back and we get Philbo's body um we go around and we poison all of the spawning pools Nepi pours like paralytic spider poison that she had from like ages before that she'd had for many sessions she's like yep this is a good use of all of these things and you like lightning that um we were then, very thorough it was so <laughs> late also at this session it was like 12 30 and we were tim was like and that's where we'll end it and we're like callie's still dead we can't end it here um so then we cast uh revivify on cal or we know we cast i think it was resurrection no not resurrection raise dead on callie at this point and neppy was like pleading with her to come back spooky tried to like again intimidate her to come back and kokanee pleaded with her and spoke to her in high tongue which they both can speak um and we and she because we had to do the like the brain strain like the brain <laughs> to get her brain out of this illicit stomach and there was no extra material this time it was just like also much less chewed it was kind of just a couple chunks so it was just it like, hastily oops, oops, gobbled put it together kokanee's shirt has never been the same color no like <laughs> no yeah which shirt did to, he use he, had, he, he did have to get a whole new shirt after that one he did i think he an got exact rid of replica him. but yeah that yes. that that cheesecloth shirt that he used and we we leveled up after that session which was really great um, which was that, see at this point feels like the last time tim has let you level up because it has been a while <laughs> it's, been, it's a while. been a minute have you guys leveled up on stream oh yeah like three times um three we, uh we start no twice we started at level 12 um at the end of the Velsium fight we were level we've leveled up to 13 and mm-hmm. then we leveled up to 14 a little bit while a little while ago um i think it was after the earth elemental fight somewhere there we leveled up to 14 but it's been a, it's been a hot minute it's, it's been, been a hot minute it's been a couple months but that's okay i'm okay to i'm okay I know. I want level 15, though. I want that. Maybe I think maybe after the Gar Yang. Listen, the more you guys level up, the closer you get to end game. So no, let's, not, let's not rush it. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of session 54, 55, called Treasures and Tangles. We investigate around, and there's nothing on any... And Zelix plane shifts out at this point. He's like... Yep thanks for this. I'm going to, he like searches in the pockets of one of the fi- mind flares, finds a totem to go to the astral sea and is like, bam, and he, he's gone. Um, so we investigate around. Um, Fildo has a white pearl, his flute, a thousand gold pieces of jewelry, this golden amulet to garl glitter gold. And Nephi's like, well, we have to take his body. And we just like put him in the bag of holding. We're just like, we're not leaving it down here. We need the proof. And we also take a tadpole of like one of the mind flare tadpoles in a jar. Um, so we discussed, and then letters just keep zapping the elder brain to mush just to like disintegrate it and make sure that it's never going to come back. You gotta be thorough. We're thorough in Blackwater. Uh, so we like go on our way out. We return to the meat prison. Um, they, the prisoners managed to fought, fight off a bunch of rats with showed up the little brain rats and also one dead illithid that had showed up. So all of the prisoners managed to fight them off. Um, we heal them as best we can. And Nepi is like searching in the pockets of this illithid and we find one of the Nautilus shell totems for the astral plane. So Nepi didn't have the ability to plane shift at that point. But when she did, she's like, oh, I can go to the astral sea now. Um, so we go back to the meet prison finnan is there he lets us in um let it, we find that the female furbolg is unconscious neppy heals her and immediately when she comes up she starts flirting with letters nice. um we have nice. a callie and finnan rest because they're pretty and then spooky stays to look everyone in clack and then letters kokanee and neppy go to find Taryn. remember um, that guy who that we were like staying here house? with this dagger Ooh. <laughs> so we go to find him um and he's not there Oh. Um, of course, uh, there's some footsteps in the dirt and there's webbing and it looks like he's been dragged off and there's some tracks leading towards a boat by a spider. He got some spider. Web. Yeah. hundred percent. He got, she loved. So, and it's, it's like, it's like, it's a big spider, but it's not as big as like, Shelob. did you scry like, on him? No, no. 
I didn't have the spell slots for it at that point. We you hadn't should, rested. You should, you should try to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we haven't heard the end of Taryn yet. Um, so we, uh, Corman and Bo, one of the other guards join us as well. And Corman, Bo, and Torna join us. Um, we find this hull of this ship that's overturned. Um, and Kokanee pings the hall and some dust falls down. And then we see, we look up in the ceiling and we see a bunch of these cocoons just hanging from the ceiling and these like leathery wings unfurl and this like spider drake kind of like awful gross oh, yeah. amalgamation flying spider. It was awful. Um, it was really, really bad. So we, you know, fight our way through it um, and like Spooky and Callie run over and they hear us fighting and they like, they come fight with us. Um, Spooky ends up getting the kill. Um, Spooky has to bring Callie up like three times with her blood bridge because she's the only one (laughs) close by to do it. Um, And we can't remove the poison sack. We try and remove the poison sack from the spider because Letters is like, can we do that? And my nephew was like, I'm gonna try it. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna poison myself, but I don't. So uh, yeah, we take everyone else back to um, back to the meat prison, but Letters and Torna stay to uh, investigate the boat. Yeah, you okay. gotta, you gotta, we gotta be thorough. Uh-huh. Gotta make sure that the spiders aren't gonna yeah, come back. Yeah, you should probably talk about what you found in there. Um, a good time. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, so like, I don't know, like, it's, it's difficult to talk about sex in D&D, because you, because, like, literally, you're at the table, you're like, yeah, that happens, because it's not like you're gonna, like, roll for it or anything. No. Like, and I, mean, I have I heard, I have heard horror stories of, like, creepy pe- people playing in, in parties that get too weird about it. I mean, um, there's a table for everybody, and some, pe- some players, like, go through the acts of sex in D&D, and there are mechanics for it. Uh, people have written mechanics for it. There is a compendium out there. Um, what was it called? Like, uh, I think, yeah, it's a 5e expansion. I've read it. It's interesting. <laughs> Worth a read. And I'm just like, yeah, we don't need that in our game. We can just be like, yeah, that happens. We fade to black. It's yeah, great. yeah. It's yeah. always like, and we do that. And we do that. You do the, you do the black do circle. <laughs> that is one thing where we don't need narratives kissing mechanics. Like, no. there's, a, there's enough no. kissing. There's enough kissing. We can just have here. the narrative mm-hmm. and the mechanic can be yep. over here. It's great. Um, and uh, yeah, so they start, they, they find a couple things in the boat. They find some iron brooches, some short, store, short swords, an old uh, set of like rusted scale mail. And then they just start making out and then they go at it. That's what I have written in my book. And then I was like, fade to black after that. That Um, is where I used my uh, potion of barbarian strength because Torna was a barbarian. And like, you gotta, you gotta match. (laughs) (laughs) So what you're saying is when you guys left, there was no boat left. It was. (laughs) There were some holes in it when we came back. We set out there to make sure that that boat was clear of spiders and unusable (laughs) you did that you did that so why did we achieve that goal boy did you ever i feel like without getting into too much details you know the scene in uh mr and mrs smith where they yeah they're like the angry the Mm -hmm. angry fight and then like make love i feel like that's exactly how it happened there was a lot of breaking things he did leave the boat with less hit points than he went into it with (laughs) (laughs) that is something that happened (laughs) Hey, that is as mechanical. That's as mechanical as as it, <laughs> as it, it. got. That's it. And then we faded to black. Um, Left so sixty nine hit points. Absolutely. Uh, so we go back to the um, meat prison. Uh, we like we get Finn in. Finn in manages to shoot down the cocoons, and we catch them. Um, we open them and we find some quagoths. We find a mind flare in one of them that's super desiccated, and then we uh, find Terran. We find Taryn in one of them. He's like, looks like he's been like, uh, pretty desiccated and like all the juiced. Yeah, he's been dejuiced, which is pretty gross. Um, we're super low on diamonds, and I don't have the spell slots for the day, so I'm just like, well, we're we can't bring him back just yet. So we get letters manages because like letters still had his giant bag of eight thousand gem gold pieces worth of gems at that point. So you dug out like a hundred gold pieces of diamonds from that bag. We returned to the meat prison. Kokanee, uh, uh, Finnan was like, I want to stay here. Uh, I don't want to keep going. 
um, I, I need to go spend some time here and I need to go kind of find myself a bit. And we're like, okay, you go, you do your thing. Um, you know where to find us, please contact us. And so Finnan decides to stay and he like starts helping ferry people out. Uh, Kokanee looks into this like circlet, the one of the circlets that we found and he, he finds again, he sees like this like set of cogs and he sees some pillars and you see that it's happening in real time. So he's like looking through the eyes of something. And we're like, it's a dragon. It's a dragon that we yes, found. Yes, it's the clockwork dragon. It's the fucking yeah, dragon. Didn't know that yet. Um, we identify a bunch of stuff that we hadn't yet. We talk about about like the hell plate armor. Um, we look at like Philbo's flute, um, the trident that we hadn't looked at before. That was Delnus's trident that was still in the bag. Uh, a potion of wild magic. Does Cl does Clack still have that potion of wild magic? Probably. I don't know. I don't. You think should you've probably ever keep it. a list of like what Clack has on him. <laughs> Okay, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> he has a potion of wild magic. Um, it's on the list. Kokanee has, Kokanee has a potion of Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. I don't even know if he remembers that. Um, we look at, like, the Baron's Claw, which is gross. It's like a little gauntlet claw. We still have that in the bag. The Baron's Spurs, which Letters really wants, but you can only wear it if you're neutral or evil, and it binds you to a nightmare, which is like a fiendish steed. Which is fucking rad as hell. Yeah. Uh, we look... I, oh, yeah, I do have the Potion of Wild Magic. It's okay. in there. Okay. Um, so we have a... Uh, we also have the like thing of Caraxian Brandy, which turns out to be a bottle of Hero's Beast potion. Um, we gave, like, there was a Pearl of Power uh, that Letters has, apparently, no, um, not anymore. That's, not that's, anymore. That's Finnans now. It's Finnans now. Gotcha. It wasn't nearly on brand enough. Right. Yeah. A pearl ring might not be quite for you. Um, and then we take a look at this small little bug-like creature that Yana has. Um, and it seems to, like, we, le like, letters identifies it. And we seem to, it seems to, like, feed off magic. So it, Spooky takes a look at it and it bites her. It attaches into her skin and buries underneath it and implants it to her. Um, she gets this pulse of power and this let, like, let yellow energy crackles off her. It's called an Archimag. Um, and three times per short rest, she can cast a cantrip as a bonus action and it would normally cost her an action. And it's essentially like it powers, it like sucks up your magic and eats your magic. And it gives you like an additional spell slot, but you have the potential of not being able to use your magic. Um, it's pretty wild. So that was episode 55. Guys, we're so close. We're so close I mean, to I the feel like of shark. Can we do it? Can we muscle let's through? Let's hit the highlights because what really matters, I yes. think, yes. is what became of Cora Thorngage. So we <sighs> took care of Phildo. We saved the people. Yes. And so we go back to Wolfrein. Yes. So we go, so the episode, or session 56, The Return of Barmwitch. We go back up to Barnwich. We manage to, Letters talks about his past. Um, I'm scanning my notes here. Uh, we take the Archimag out of Spooky. We go to the Quagoth village. We free them and give them food. Um, we go upstairs. There's no guards around. They're gone. Like all the guards are gone. We go find Spooky's mom. She's in the, um, oh, yeah. the Bright Keep. And we like, it seems like she'd had like feeble mind on her and we managed to break the magic. Um, we go out into the sun. There's like this beautiful, like it's a beautiful sunny day. And we make our way through the glitter guard soldiers are melting down their armor in the middle of the city. There's like, there's been this huge revolt. Gordo and Pipkin and Horlin are like, the captains have abandoned, all the guards are there. They're like talking about like to bring democracy back and holding elections. It's like this beautiful, Beautiful, wonderful time. Uh, we call for friends of Taryn, and we find his three friends, uh, Chibuso, Bertram, and Chem, and they're his band, uh, and we manage to bring him back for some, like we bring him back with Raid's dead, um, and we take- Some guy, we brought some him back. Guy. We brought him back, it was kind of our fault. So we go to Gordo and Pipkin, and we start kind of talking to like, where did the captains go? And they're like, Corlin coordinated the captains fled and they started traveling north up towards through the Crinewood with plans look like they're heading towards ice meat. Um, and then the sisters, which is not good. So we, we, we run and we like, we start investigating the bright keep. We try and find anything. There's nothing else. And we decide to follow the guards up through the Crinewood. Um, we keep going and we go, we find some diamonds. We find a couple other things. We get some ivory. Uh, Clack gets drunk. 
Um, this is where we meet Minlin Shortbottom. This is where we meet Minlin, and she was the one who sold us the diamonds and the ivory. Um, and Thanks, Minlin. We knew what a, a patch was. So we keep going up through the uh, the Crinewood until we get to this giant, like, clearing, and it's really, really weird. We are in. We we manage to avoid this like giant spider tree that starts walking after us. It's like 60 feet tall. It shoots like a paralytic web at Kokanee and we just start fucking booking it through the woods because we don't, we can outrun it. So we, we go up through, we find this like giant clearing and there's 50 or 60 or 70 glitter guard captains lying on their backs in a circle on the ground with spaces between them with their heads exploded. They're just lying on the ground. And there's one space that's missing. And Cora's not there. And like 10 of them have like Queensguard crests. Um, and like every seventh one is missing. And there's no tracks leaving it. Uh, it's super, super weird. We're like, what the fuck is this? Um, letters and we does, still don't know. And we still don't know. So Letters casts, uh, Nebby tries to scry, can't find Cora. Letters to Skywrite, basically saying, we have Fildo, we're in the clearing, get fucked, Cora. And we wait for a bit and that doesn't happen. Um, they manage to track kind of the arcane magic and Letters and Spooky figure out that there's been a gate, uh, like a planar gate that's been opened. So Nepi casts Sending to Cora and it, she says to her, your cowardice surprised even me. We'll hunt you down wherever you go. Death will find you. It always does. And she says back, you'll pay for what you've taken from me. I assure you, my eyes have been opened and you will only know pain. So, so we have that like, to look forward to. So we have that to look forward to. Cora sucks. Um, so we figure out, and like Kamea had also, like when we had checked in with Kamea, she'd basically been like, Cora's gone. The queen is gone. Like we have no, because she was queen at this point. She had been coronated and then she had just disappeared. So we're just like, what the fuck? She's, and we were like sent to Kamea, we're like, well, she's not on this plane. So your queen is gone. Sorry. Uh, this is when, um, a clack and, uh, they, oh, clack flirt is trying to like talk to spooky and they talk about the, like the naked busts that he sculpted of her and he apologizes, Oh yeah, <laughs> which was really sweet. And he's like, I'm really sorry. And she's like, you can't, do I mean, that creepy, without, but sweet. she's like, you can't do that without asking people's consent. He's like, I know. And then they just started talking to sweet. Um, we we go plane shift to Sorrel, the air elemental plane. Um, and we, uh, Nepi and Kokani go on a little date, uh, which is really sweet. They go linens shopping. Is that their... the one that, that letters followed you around on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nepi and Kokani went linens shopping for their new, uh, for the, the new room at the Blackwater Keep. Letters didn't them. follow very often. It was a really, <laughs> like very long. It was a They're very like, boring date. We need day. some drapes. There's some bed sheets that we need. Um, they discuss like, uh, you know, you know, that like, he asks you like, if I, we go to, we have to go to Bacall soon. She's like, I know. And she's like, if I die in Bacall, he's like, if you can't bring me back, he's like, destroy everyone. And she's like, of course I will. Of course I will. I'd go to the end of the earth for you. Like I'd do anything. I can level the city. Yeah, she would. She would have leveled the city. <laughs> Which we did without even having anyone die. <laughs> Which we did. And to be fair, like, she was like, she's like, I'd start with the priestesses. She's like, if you couldn't be brought back. She's like, I would start with all the priestesses that hurt you. Then I would go to your father and then we would deal with Belsoom. And essentially we did that in that order. Except full it wasn't John Wick. Yeah, hundred percent. Nebby would go full John Wick. Don't um, touch my dog. Don't touch my husband. Let's exactly. <laughs> don't touch my temple. Don't touch my husband. That's, that's two things. Um, I can't. So we go and then we, in the morning, we plane shift back to Wolfreen. We're like reunited with Kamea's house. Callie and Kamea like reunite and uh, we are back home and it's wonderful and amazing. And end that the is the end of the Barn Witch arc. Meet prison, done. Done. And Meet prison broken. What we can do too is probably next, what would probably be helpful for our next little arc. Um, next, Chatwater, we actually have something really special planned, so we should talk about that. Should we, do we mm -hmm. want to announce it? 
Let's yeah. do it. Let's yeah? do it. Okay. Let's be wild so, and crazy. Wild and crazy. So there is an amazing, amazing campaign setting that we here at Blackwater have been really excited about. It's the Wagadu Chronicles. Um, you've probably heard me talk about it before, created by this company called Twin Drums, based out of Berlin. Um, and we are so excited because next Chatwater, Sean and Yanis and myself are sitting down with the creator of the Wagadu Chronicle, Alan, um, who's going to be calling in from Berlin. Uh, and we're going to be chatting all things Wagadu. We're going to be talking about the lore. We're going to be talking about um, its use as a 5e campaign setting. We're going to be talking about it as an Afrocentric campaign setting. I am so, so excited. Um, they've been so Oh, somebody's knocking at my door. Oh, well, um, they've been so gracious. He's been so gracious to like give us his time. So we're really, really excited about that. So that's, will be our chat water next week. Um, but then after that, probably what we'll do is we'll do the couple sessions that encompass the six month break. That which yeah. seems logical. Yeah. And Kali and Kamea's wedding. Yeah. I think that's good. And then we can probably, that which gives us a really nice lead in to the start of the Belsumark. Uh, which is where, you know, to get us everyone caught up to where we were when we started streaming, mm -hmm. which seems like a good thing. And then once that's all done, then we can deep dive way back into the past. Unless, Sean, you think into, that like, you should Zacchaeus go into, and... into like, episode, like session one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless you I prefer want... to, to go in a different order. I'm oh, always. I would love to just skip over that and do like theoretical, like in utero black, like chat water, where it was like, what were they like when they were toddlers? Like, <laughs> that's what I want to know. Um, like, right at the beginning. Who knows? I First know. 24 hours of life. What was that like for each of the characters? Neppy doesn't know. I have no idea for Neppy. But um, we know. But we know. No. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll do the kind of six months uh, because we had basically after the Barn Arc, Bar Blackwater did this, like, not, we didn't actually have a six month break. We just played out a six month time jump uh, in one session. Um, and then that led us into Callie and Kamea's wedding, which was just like delightful and so wonderful and beautiful. Uh, and then we will uh, lead into the Velsum arc and that early bit of the Velsum arc, which we talk about a lot, but we haven't delved in. So, so we're essentially at the beginning of session 58. So we essentially have 58 to 72 is our next chunk that we will be talking about. I'm really, really excited. But yes, next week, Wagadu. Um, we're also gonna be sprinkling in some episodes about some RPG theory coming up. Mm -hmm. I think Sean, Sean and Yanis both wanted me to do an episode on the history of RPGs. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking of is we might maybe even do like Wagadu and then we'll do the six month time jump and then we'll do an RPG theory one and then we'll jump into the Bell Sumer. So that's Hell yeah, that fun. sounds great. And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got for y'all today. That's what I got. Thank you so much, Em, for oh, fucking yeah. blowing our minds, keeping track of our lore, being the Always. keeper of the lore. Always. It's and honestly reminding me about my that pleasure. wild magic potion. Yeah, Clack does have a wild magic potion. I'm here to lore keep for you. This yeah. and you know what's crazy? I think I'm like after tonight's or after not tonight, like Saturday's session. I think this I think I only have I have to look now. Where is it? I have one more session in this book oh. and then it's done. Wow. And then it's done. We got to make it a good one. We got to make it I'm going to kick up some drama just, just to just make the last to page it, riveting. But well, like, too much if people are going through the space. book, it's going to be like a real page turner. We'll be like, wait, they did like, what? Huh? But what happened? But oh, like, I need I another have, book. I need another book. I have, I still have like two sessions to, I'm a little bit behind on my lore keeping. Uh, this book encompasses up to 225 pages, and I'm currently on page 204. So we'll see if three sessions worth can cover 20 pages. Who knows? Who knows? And then it's on to book number three. Very exciting. Very yeah. exciting. In the meantime, thank you all for joining us tonight. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure learning all about the meat prison and all the Bar stuff that went on. Part four. Please join uh M and the rest of the ladies, including Tiana on Wednesday. Yes. Uh, and then Saturday for our regular stream and then join us Monday for our very exciting guest. Um, we will, we love you guys very much. Love each other. Be nice to one another and we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye. Bye.